Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 43 of Hashtag Ask Jim. And uh, Jim is in a lot better voice tonight. You don't have a cold this week, so... No, I don't. No, I'm fat and fit. I had someone last week go to me, offer Jim... You should have given Jim a water, given Jim a water. I said, we offer him a water, he didn't want it, so... You chug through. You got a cough. What does a what does a glass of water then? Yeah, exactly right. So I said that we do offer it. They think we're a bit cool. We're not giving you any water, but we we did make the offer and then didn't, didn't want it. Okay, so run through a couple of things right now. So the gym's dinner is we've just cancelled it just because there's no tickets being bought. So which is unfortunate. We Nobody might... wants to eat dinner with me. Oh, it seems. I, like... I'm very hurt. But <laughs> I accept. I accept my fate. Yeah, I know I'm ugly as sin, but anyway. <laughs> but we tried. Rejected. It. But we tried it, but we, we might it. we might do something again next year. No, so, we won't. No, not in regards to a dinner. We might try something a bit different regarding a business seminar or something like that. We'll see what happens, but we'll try that. So just letting you know that it is cancelled. There was no tickets purchased, so I didn't have to refund anything. So we'll try something again next year. If you've got any suggestions, please let us know. Now, I just want to make a few comments and we can get right into it. There's 50 people tuning in which now, which is great. So I want to mention that last week's winner was Seth from Instagram who had a Jim's Cobloaf shirt. So the Jim's Cobloaf merchandise, we put it on there and he came across from Instagram. There's a photo on the screen there you can see oh, of Seth yeah. there sending it in there. So thanks to Seth for coming along. We've got another one from Instagram tonight, which will be the bear. So best comment or question tonight, Jim's going to pick this exclusive new bear, which is the pre-release. They go live tomorrow night. There's around 100 of them. So you're... this is a this is a historic moment, the first of the new Jim's bear. That's right. You can see them all behind us. So I think the boys are doing something creative with them today for oh, an ad. Wow. So. Look at those. Yeah, there's their little army there, mate. Their little Jim's Bear army, yeah. and you can see all the different divisional shirts on there. So they'll go live tomorrow on the on the uh, website. And we'll let you know. Uh, just letting you know as well, we do have the podcast as up. So it's called the Jim's Cast. If you search for that on iTunes or Spotify and YouTube, there's lots of great stuff in there. Like even if you're a generic business owner, Jim's says some really good stuff, and it's about bio history, um, mental illness stuff. There's a lot of stuff in it. So. Make sure you check that out and subscribe and leave a rating. Now, we just want to mention one more thing before we quickly get into it. Um, Monopoly. Yep. So we've had a development on Jim's Monopoly. So. Jim's Monopoly. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to knock out the normal, boring, boring version of Monopoly with property and all about Jim's services. And the great thing about it, which people won't realise, is so basically what happened was when Jim said go and organise it, I, we reached out to a company and Jake and I got onto them and they gave us some pricing back today, which we yeah. gave to Jim and and Jim's sort of gone, yeah, we can work with that. But the thing is, you've already written out five pages, or you've written out literally. I've written out all the cards, all the cards, all the all the stations yeah. and stuff like that. So, so instead of advance to go, you go advance to pay, and then you get breached. <laughs> you get breached. No you, go to and jail, you, and yeah. you go to no jail. Just you get breached. That's worse than jail <laughs> in gyms. That's really bad to be breached. And then you say advance three paces and go to, um, you know, dog wash, grooming, for yeah, example. that's right. And, and it's, it's all services in place. And there'll be a lot of community chest cards. So there might be a few funny ones in and there The community well. chest yeah. is all, I think it's all customer service and chance is business success. Right. So, okay. you know, if customer service, if you, if you get a, if you, if you upset a customer, you're rude to a customer, well, you got to pay 200 bucks fine. That's right. Or you get like a five star survey. You can go five to star spots. survey, you right. go forward, and you, get, right. and you get, you get this and, and, uh, but it is going to happen. We are, there is a costing for it. Um, we're just waiting for approval for it, but, um, there'll be 1500 copies. Um, and they're going to, the game's going to be literally written by Jim. So it's a Jim's game. The majority of it's going to be written by Jim. Yeah, so. I gave you the outline. You just exactly right. You've given an outline. I did the whole board. I laid it out. It's the most enthusiastic I've seen you on writing that thing for a long time, which is good. You wrote a lot out. It's the most detail I've ever seen. Yes. It's going to be good. A Jim's Monopoly game actually written by Jim. Jim. That's right. Very exclusive. There won't be anyone else. It'll be all Jim content. So we are looking forward to that. Um, probably next next year, depending on how it goes and all that sort of stuff. Early next year it will be, mm. so we can get there. That's wrap. That's come out of um, a suggestion from you on six months ago. So we'll give credit to you. Um, he made sure I mentioned that one. So right. we'll leave that there. And as well, always, we, we ignored him at the time. I don't know why, but then somebody <laughs> came up with it last week. And said, That's a good idea. Let's do it. Well, we, we revisited again, and Jake Jake found another alternative to Hasbro. And we, we emailed him. We talked to the, the bloke and. Away we went, so there we go. All right, cool. We're going to get to a few people tuning in now straight into it. So Jared Bywaters is tuned in again. So how are you, Jared? Um, he's a franchisee in Mulling. Uh, Jared Clark's gone here with a quick question. How much do your franchises cost for the Diggers? Jim's Diggers. How much is a Diggers franchise? I don't know. It's, it's mostly in the equipment, actually. I don't think the franchise itself is much more, about 20 grand or something like that. Yeah, we did an interview with Paul Sanders, who's the divisional, which is on the YouTube page. He tells actually all about it for around an hour. Um, Mm. One three one five four six or Jim Stiggers. I don't know what the rough cost is with the whole equipment, but I know there's leasing and stuff. And most yeah. most franchises aren't particularly expensive. Around about twenty grand is pretty typical. But yeah. Then you have then you have the equipment, which is you know the, the, these big machines. They're, they're wonderful machines. I actually had a go at one. I was terrible at it, but 
That's true. It was. It. It. it they're very fun to use. Yeah, you did have a They do cost a bit. Yeah, they do. But there's a great interview with um, Paul Sandals, who's the div- uh, the divisional manager for an original franchise, or you most likely be dealing with Jared. So watch that on the YouTube page, and we've just hit more than a thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is great. One point one thousand subscribers on YouTube. So wow. if you're not subscribed to our channel, please do. We're releasing lots of cool content. There's one here from Naomi. I'm not. I'm going to get to a couple of other questions on the other feeds. Naomi Barnard's gone. Hello. Tell me more about the financial planning business. So Jim's financial planning business. When, or when, Jim's bookkeeping. There's two. Bookkeeping we do. We and we do Jim's, there is Jim's finance. finance. Yeah, there is Jim's but finance. Not as financial well. planning. We don't actually do that yet. Maybe maybe you'd like to start the division. I mean. Jim's financial planning could be it could be a could be a division. Well, bookkeeping's definitely on the march at the moment. Floyd's doing a good job, and you've got yeah. Jim's financial services as well. They do a great job there. So, okay. something to inquire about, Naomi. Then Ricky Jergens gone. I like a Jim's dog wash, Teddy. How much do they cost, please? I will know tomorrow night, Ricky. So if you look on the website and the Facebook page, um, yeah, we'll have them up. Isn't there a cost? Isn't there there will be a cost, but I don't know exactly what we're going to do for the cost yet. On the mm. bears. Where's the gym stock watch? We got a gym stock watch there. You there got a gym stock watch there. There's a gym stock watch. So they'll be there. So we'll be on tomorrow night, Ricky. Um, we'll be all up on as an e-commerce store and gym shop, and there'll be a cost there. They're not going to be too much at all, to be honest. So, Actually, yeah. There you Gym stock watch. There we go. So they'll be available from tomorrow on the website. And we'll let you know, and uh, we'll get to some more ones here, which is great. So someone here, Justin Maloney, has gone. G'day, Jim. So g'day to Justin Maloney. Yeah, I think it's a first time viewer. Thanks for leaving a comment. We've got seventy six people watching now, Jim, which is great because we didn't know because obviously you couldn't do tomorrow night because you had a a school event. Yes. 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 I'd be going to the big roundup for the school. All the all the kids and my daughter Esther is. It's going to have a starring role. She does a solo, so she's we're very proud of her. And that's and that's right. So um, we've got one here. Josephine Gwyn uh, Cribs has gone. I have a six-year-old Rotty girl, Rottweiler, who's never had a bath. She seems to be terrified of water. Can you help? In the Cranbourne area, Dog Wash page. Jim's Dog Wash has people everywhere. Yeah. They're great. And, and they're, so. they're amazingly good. The thing about Dog Wash people is they, they, they love dogs. They're always dog fanatics. And they, and, they can, and they can just gentle a dog and do things with the dog. I've, I've never heard of a dog they couldn't wash. Yeah, that's true. That's true. They're, they're remarkably good. It, and it's, it's really something. People who don't have that knack can't do it. You just have to have a real feel for dogs to be able to, to, to get the dog to be to like it. And in fact, they do they do tend to get used to it at the bath after a while, and they and they seem to quite enjoy it. Yeah, they can do. Your, they do. They they do the your cats dogs, don't yeah. like it. The cat will never enjoy being washed. <laughs> but dogs seem to get the hang of it all right. But there's plenty, plenty around Cranbourne area too, Josephine. So one three one five four six or Jim's Dog Wash or Jim's Dog Net. We've got some great people. Our, our little um, Cavallo, 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 right? Cavoodle, is yeah. that what it's called? You got a cavoodle. Yeah, cavoodle. You got a cavoodle. Yeah, yeah she, she gets yeah. washed and, and cut every now and then. Yeah. Otherwise, she looks like everybody <laughs> goes like that. <laughs> With all the, all the hair comes out, all the fur comes out. So definitely one three one five four six. So now we're going to get to some comments and questions coming through on the live feed. So if you are watching via the other live streams, I'm not ignoring you. Um, just put them into the gyms group one. I've just put. We've just had Ben in the background who's helping out scanning all the pages, putting the ones through. So we've addressed them. So Peter Wolseley's gone with the question here. Next year, bigger production, please. Full studio. Better graphics, the works, please. Lol, live crosses to the poor people out mowing someone's backyard, lol. I think he's being a bit tongue-in-cheek there, Peter. What do you mean poor people? It's a fantastic job. You've got to be joking, Peter. Mate, what are you saying? We just did a, we just did a business interview series with a guy called Dan Kay who was 26 and turned over oh. 450K. You so, know, I, I have I have this little job that I do where I ring up my, my key anniversaries, 10, yes, 15, 20, 20, 25. 25 years. Yeah. And the, 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 the most are about 25 years, but... Uh, I tell you what, what I hear again and again, what a fantastic decision it was. I love this. It's such a great lifestyle. It's healthy. I'm on my own boss. I see my kids. It's they, they love it. It's a really good job. You know, you know, gardeners are about Happy the happiest people, yeah. profession in the world. I've said it before, but it's true. The science shows it. It's gardeners and florists for a second. I gardeners think. and yeah. florists. Gardeners and florists. Lawyers are down the bottom. So if you, you want to have a great life, don't go to law school. Buy Jim's Mowing Crack. Get to smell it. Right. It's actually a lot cheaper too. It is, and you get to smell the roses every day. That's right. And you don't get stressed and lose all your hair. That's right. So that sort of stuff. And if you and if you, and if you go to law school, well, then then you you probably won't be a lawyer. Yeah, that's what I did. I'm doing this. I went to <laughs> I went I went, I went to do it I'm doing this. But you so go to Jim's Boeing, and you never know where you can go. You could be a massive multi-millionaire industry. Who knows where it's depends going where to. you want to take it. It's all about who, who the person is. is. It's a, it's a great idea. I'll watch that one with Dan Kay when that comes so out. So I don't stuff. get this poor guys mowing lawns, no way. They're the, they're the most lucky guys on earth. They're the ones with 10 investment properties, don't worry about that. Yeah, they're doing quite right. well. And then Sal John's gone here as well. Hey guys, so hi to Sal. Sal watches every week and I hope you got your video, Sal. Eric Jurgens has gone here. Good evening, Joel. You have upset my routine by changing. By the way, Jim has a cough almost each week. Yeah, I've got a little bit of asthma. I've got a, I've got a slight asthma. I, I, 
just come onto me last year. I think because I had a smoky, smoky fireplace at the farm. I think it's getting better actually. And let me let us know what your routine is, Eric. I'm quite interested to see what hear what your your thing your routine is. But you are a loyal viewer every Wednesday. It was actually because of Jim's school, as we said before. So mm. um, we were. I'd love to stick to Wednesday, but school comes first. Well, I did actually say to, just just to my wife that maybe Facebook like no way <laughs> you're not missing your daughter. That's she exactly right. Know. This is second priority. We think this is priority, but this is second priority. No, no, she's right too. So Justin Maloney, one of the other pages gone. G'day from Jim's mowing Murray Bridge in South Australia. Murray Bridge. Great. South Australia's doing great guns. Naomi Barnard's gone, thank God. So thanks, Naomi. Just talk to Lloyd or talk to Jim's financial services. They're really good people. Then Josephine's gone here. Also got an 18-year-old Border Collie Kelpie Cross. Jeez, that's an old dog. 18 years. Border wow. Collie Kelpie Cross. I like Border Collies. They're nice dogs. Very smart, smart animals. They're very, very smart. Danny, and there's one here on the live feed now. So Danny, Danny Armanius has gone, this is the man himself, question mark. This is me. Yes. That's me. So we've done 10 questions with Jim Penman as a video on YouTube as well. So. And if you actually want to know it's really me, you go into <laughs> Jim Penman images and you flick through a few and you'll see a picture of me actually um, up against one of the old trailers with the old logos yeah. on it. And that's the actual drawing it was taken from, this particular logo. That was me. That's correct. And you can see me with the beard and everything at the time. Well, welcome, Danny. Thanks for tuning in. Now, Sal John's gone here. I'm from Sydney, but I would like to take you and your wife out for dinner of your choice sometime this month. What's your thoughts, Jim? So <laughs> Sal's literally watched every week. So he's a loyal viewer. He wants to take you and your wife out for dinner. Uh, in Sydney. Uh, well, I think, if, I think if you're from Sydney and you're down in Melbourne, out this way, maybe Sal, come out during training week. I'll, we'll put that offer for him, maybe. Come yeah, out. Come out in training with we'll be our guest. And come and come and come and sit down and have dinner with me. So come out, yeah. Come I'm out. Not, I'm not a great I'm not a great traveller actually. I'm a real homebody he sale, is. So. But if you come out on a training week sale on a Wednesday night, we obviously do this live in front of the franchise. Jim will have dinner with you before. We'll make yeah, sure of that. Because sure. he's watched every single one, Sal. And he's a non gym uh, person. He's actually I think you run a plumbing business or something, Sal, from memory. Yeah, come on you, Sal. Yeah, sure. Come and have dinner with me. Cool. It's, it's quite quite good food too on during training. I don't mind it at all. The food's great. There's never get any complaints. Not as good as my wife's cooking. She cooks a really, really great vegetable lasagna. It's so good. She did it on Monday night and it's virtually all gone now. We said, even though it's a huge thing like this, it's just beautiful. I said, why can't she get the, the kitchen to cook that? It's too <laughs> difficult. I can't do it. Not the Szechuan stuff? She is so good, mate. Yeah, she's a great cook. Now, after 80 people watching now, which is great, Jim. 80 people on a Tuesday night, which is awesome. So thanks for tuning in. And leaving lots of questions and comments. We're going to whip through them now. And Denise McMaster Kingston's gone, yes, loving the bear. We'll be stuffing them in my suitcase next week when I'm there for regional training. So Denise is a bookkeeper coming down for regional training next week. So just pick one up from the office. Yeah, Denise. Uh, we can do that. No problem at all. Now, let's go here. Harrison Toff, coming close to the end of an era, out of all the gym's designs and the memes of 2019, which memes have stood out the most and stuck with you? Cheers. It's a great question, Harrison. I love that one. Which are the memes? Which meme of 2019, which has resonated with you best? So 2019 out of the meme comp. We obviously picked your favourite well, ones. But... So I, like, I like Snow White and the Seven Gyms. Snow White and the Seven Gyms was one of the winners. That's very yeah. memorable. I like that one. What else did they do that was good? Those Jim's mullets, which I didn't mind. They had little mullets on the huh? logo. Yeah. Uh, right. There's a lot of different stuff. What else was there? I'm trying to think from the logo comp now. We did like had like thousands of entries, so there was a lot of good stuff. I like the I like the one they did did in the um uh, in the the, the poster as me as Darth Vader. Oh yes, correct. Jim's Empire needs you. I don't. That's a great meme. That's yes, I'm looking really grim. Right. Yeah, so they put your face and they sort of silhouetted into yeah, Darth Vader's mask, all, all in black and, and stuff. Yeah. I think that was a really good one. I so like that. that was actually Ben behind the camera. Ben actually did yeah, that ben, one. Ben, ben yeah. did that. That was good. Ben. So if you come to the training, they got, you some, see they got that. some good artistic talent around here. They do. Peter's yeah, all ugly as sin, but anyway. <laughs> 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 that's a bit. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> Gee whiz! I think he's. I think he's missing one of the when you say that. <laughs> Jeez, I hate to see see what you say about me. All right, we'll keep going here. Oh, worse, worse. Oh, right, a lot worse, worse. stuff. Yeah. Now there's been some ripping memes. So if you search hashtag Jim's logo comp on Instagram, there's around more than a thousand, I think. And you actually go to Jim's.net under meme generator, you actually see the announcements off the winners where the ten staff picked theirs as well. And there's like Jim's red wine and Jim's wine delivery, all this sort of stuff. So ninety five percent we actually probably could do as division. So. It was quite interesting. Actually, uh, the one, the, probably the one I liked the best historically was Jim's Hitman. I yeah. think that was really good with little gun on, on the jerseys. That was fantastic. That was done by some of our franchisors at conference one year. That's true. I think that would be a great division. You know, you know, if you're French, I mean, I mean there would be, be a lot of market amongst the franchisees. Yeah. Because after all, we all have problems with debt collection. So you see, okay, if you'd like to pay my, my mowing bill or I'll get Jim's Hitman to, to pay a call on you, which would you prefer? Yeah, probably, probably not the yeah. 
But uh, you'd you probably get a by high rate of collection. I mean, I don't know what the, the Lord think of these. I think innovative methods of business should always be considered. Innovative methods of business. So <laughs> innovative. <laughs> yeah, we'll move on with that. Innovative method of business. Being a stand hey, we could also also apply it to yeah. my franchise. You don't give good customer service. You know, if you get one more complaint, Jim's hitman's going to come and knock on your door. I mean, I think that would drastically <laughs> reduce the level of complaints. It would definitely have an effect on it. I'll tell you what, it would definitely That's do right. something. It might reduce the number of franchisees somewhat, but... You know. <laughs> We'll leave them move on. So Jim's Meming here's gone for a few love hearts. I love Jim's Meming. Jim's Meming's watching. He's doing a great job with all his stuff. You, Renault, has gone, good idea doing that, doing a Jim's Monopoly. Yes, we've acknowledged it, you. What do you want to give you for his idea? Let me give him a free set. What do you reckon? Oh, we'll give you a free set, you. We'll, we'll give, I think I think it's fair enough to give him a free, free set. Free set, you. Then David McDonald's gone here. So David's the one who helped you out your headphones. I reckon it's going to be really fun. I, 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 don't, I mean, I hate Monopoly. It's an awful game, but I reckon actually <laughs> saying, bridge, bridge, bridge. <laughs> Go to breach. <laughs> you say that in the office anyway. Do not pass known. payday. <laughs> Do not click two hundred dollars. Go and be breached. I mean that that just two hundred dollar reinstatement fee. Two hundred dollar reinstatement fee. All that sort of stuff. <laughs> well, there actually is. As a matter of fact, if somebody's if somebody's <laughs> terminated true. that system, we've got to bring them back, which we often do because yeah. they pay your insurance. It's two hundred bucks to come back on. That's true. So you can put it as a community just card or something like that. <laughs> you keep going here. So Dad McDonald's going. I'll have a monopoly. You get a one star. You have to ring Jim. That's true. One star, ring Jim, or one star, go back three places, or something yeah, like that. That's right. And then James Meming's gone, Dan, this is like episode 40, and the amount of viewers is only growing. Thanks for that, James Meming. And, I mean, and you're obviously sharing our content, and we appreciate it. So, um, yeah, it's growing. It's great. We had 80 viewers at one time tonight, and hopefully we can get a bit more. And then Denise has gone here, love the Monopoly idea. I'm so uncreative. Where did you come up with that idea? I am a Jim's bookkeeper. We don't do creative. It was one of our staff members actually, Denise, yeah. from six he's months Eugene, ago. Eugene, IT. Eugene, who mentioned it on Jim's. He's, on... he's, a, he's a hardware guy. He's the guy Absolutely. that keeps us safe from all the hackers out there. That's true. He's, a great, he's great, Eugene. He really is. Even if he's not watching, he's great. And Sal John's gone, I like negative, negative review fines should go to charity. Negative review fines should go to charity. Then Jesse Ball's going with the question here. This was answered on one of the Google questions because we've done the top 10 search on and done a video. He's going, what's Jim's net worth? My net worth? Yeah. What's your net worth? Ha! I'm not going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> not as much as you think. <laughs> That's but, the answer we traditionally but get. They tried to put me down for the rich... rich, rich 500, right? Yeah, BRW. Said, You've got to be joking. I'm not even in that order of magnitude. I'm just a lot... I'm famous, but I'm not rich. Probably some franchisors that have more money, I reckon, or some divisionals. I don't know. <laughs> it's not worth as much. It, it, it sounds like a massive business, but you know we only get a little trickle of income from each franchisee, and most of that goes in our vast IT expenses. I think stuff. the brand Seriously. recognition and brand IP far outweighs the um, yes. net income to yeah, Jim's yeah. HQ. It's kind of like so a, spread out. It's, it's, it, we're a tiny company with a huge brand. That's the strange thing about it. Yeah, it's interesting. It's crazy how it works like that. There's another question here from Zane Hack McClark's gone, will you ever stop making new types of franchises, question mark? No, absolutely not. In fact, we're looking at one today. We're just, just checking out something about um, portable buildings. There's a company that wants to put our brand on it and they can go out and they can they can train our guys in just a few weeks to put up these these, these buildings. Yeah, so it's like outdoor garages, sheds, dairy outdoor sheds, sheds, there's yeah. sheds, everything. So we're going to call it most likely gyms, sheds and garages, yeah. but they do a full range and um, we're but quite just, excited. They just come out today. Yeah, I was in the meeting with them last last week. So well, it came up to me today. That's true. I didn't come up to you. I went to validate it. I'm told nothing about this until, <laughs> until the last. I'm the last person to know. We had to bet it all, so it was good. No, to, yeah. it, was, it was it's a great idea actually. And you've got a company that's going to do the training, and it looks like a great product. And they are great products. It's awesome products. Yeah, mm. it's all blue scope steel stuff. It's really good. It's great extra income too. It's actually a potential new division. Oh, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, as a new division. Yeah, as opposed division. to a service. Yes. So we'll see how that goes. Now, Peter Wolseley's gone here. Jim said last week that he drives a relatively old Mitsubishi. Has he ever wanted to buy a Lamborghini? No. <laughs> <laughs> I I would find having an expensive car a negative. I, I think it's just a complete waste of money. I get no pleasure from it. Well, Maccas did some good marketing with it when they bought two Lambos and put it to the thing and put the Maccas logo. What about the big Jim's head on the Lambo? I'm happy to take that out. And I'm happy to do that one. Not my style. Not my style. <laughs> I, nice I, company car. No way. <laughs> I've had several of my staff members, so I won't mention who wanted me to buy them all Mercedes. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. There's a, there's a story behind that. Oh, yeah, okay. There's there was, a story It was all that. based on the fact that they could they could put plaster, the logos all over it, and use it for free advertising and stuff. Absolutely, mobile billboards. Exactly right. So <laughs> <laughs> they said it's not even tax deductible. They said, yes, it is. And I said, no, it's not. Just check with, with finance. That's not me. I'll, I'll, I won't say his name, but he knows who he is if he sees his one. 
<laughs> Luke McGraw's gone here, Jimbo. Everybody can type a crappy old Mitsubishi like me. In fact, <laughs> most of them have better cars than me. Tesla's the one, though, isn't it? If you could ever, if, let's say Tesla, if you want to spoil no, yourself. No, 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 no. I, once electric cars come down in value, to, it's comparable to a, I would buy one. Okay. It's got to be, it, 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 give us five years, it'll, it'll get there. But it'll be a Tesla. If it comes down in price, you would get a Tesla. No, I, I don't care what it is. It could be a Honda. I don't care what it is. I just want an electric car. Okay. And I want an electric car that I can, I can, I can have solar panels on my farm and I can charge it. I never have to pay a cent for power or, or um, petrol in my whole life. Never have to go to a petrol station. I'd love that. That would be good. So I'm going to get to a few, <coughs> few questions in. Josie, Josie, Brock's gone. Hi, Jim and Joel from Jim's Bookkeeping Southport. Yeah, so just... hi, Josie. So there's a few questions coming on the live feed. There's been heaps of comments and questions, which is awesome. We're going to get smashed through a lot of them here right now. So Peter Burns has gone. G'day, Jim and Joel. Would, would Jim ever see a time when he thinks that there is enough gyms divisions and he would start really rejecting people coming forward to ask to use the gyms brand? Oh, we do all the time now. People come forward to ask to use our brand for this and that. We, we don't do things that are outside. We don't do things that are site-based. No. And we don't do things where we can't see at least 60 bucks an hour for our franchisees as a, just an ordinary competent operator with a bit of experience. If they can't make 60 bucks an hour, it's not worth doing. Um, and we don't do things where there's not enough demand too. Yeah. So, so we actually get quite a few. And we're also, probably more important, we don't do things that people we're not confident of. And that's the biggest factor in starting new divisions, having the right person behind it. So we knock them back. But look, there's, there's we, we got a list of about 100 things that we would love, divisions we would love to do. All mobile divisions mm. from, from optometry, hearing to... Physio, everything. Physio, mm. medicine, chiropractor. There's, there's a massive, massive different stuff we'd love to be able to do. And that's just in the health area. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. Then Peter's free says... We've thanks. got 50 divisions. We could easily have 200, I reckon. Definitely, there's a lot of services and demand out there. But the, the big thing, though, is not so much having a division start. It's making it grow. And the ones that are successful are the ones that have got at least 100. Yeah, that's true. So in, in our Monopoly game... The, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <coughs> well, the divisions that get featured are the ones that got at least a hundred, like antennas and mowing and cleaning and test and tag and those. They get to be um, a group. Yep. Like 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 a group of properties. And then we got the fit, but there's fifty up there. It's going the fifty ones as well, though, isn't it? And they and they're in for the sort of like they're, they're the stations and the utilities. And, and so. working stuff with the community cards and stuff as well. We can work in there and spread the love amongst everyone. So he's gone, thanks from a very happy franchise there from Jim's Cleaning and Wallen. So thanks. That's great to hear you're happy, Peter. And yes, from Jim's Cleaning, we love Jim's Cleaning. That's everything that matters. That's exactly right. He's happy is the whole purpose of this thing. Now, Sasha Henry's gone high from Jim's Mowing in Mulgoa. I don't know where, where's Mulgoa? I don't know. Queensland? I don't know. Let us know where that is. It sounds Sasha. sort of Queenslandish. Queenslandish. <laughs> I'll tell you what, West Australia has weird names. I mean, I they're, they're, I, it's quite unlike anything else, but Queensland is a bit strange. I used to live in, I used to live in WA. It's like Marangaroo, Inaloo. Inaloo. Yeah. Inaloo. yeah. There's Canberra a, has a few strange Girling. ones too. Canberra? Very, yeah, yeah, yeah very, very strange and, and, and a lot of Aboriginal stuff and things like that. Yeah, there's a lot of Indigenous names, a lot of, lot of stuff because of it's obviously well, Indigenous it's land. Indigenous names are good. You say national heritage. That's it. After all, Australia's been around for 60,000 years or maybe 40,000. So why not Why not take advantage of that? That's exactly right. So we'll keep going here. So Stacey Burgess has gone high from Jim's Dog Wash North Brisbane. Do you think the way of the future is battery-operated mowers? How many far away do you think they are away and will Jim be selling them? No, we're not going to sell them because that's not our area. No. But battery mowers are good. We've actually been doing trials right now. We've got a special trailer done. We're driving around with these um, Ego machines on board and they're, and they're ch charging with a solar panel during the day. It's about an $11,000 setup. Yes. But, um, no more petrol. And, and the, the guys who are using them love them. I use a, I use a battery pump by myself on my farm. You do. And when people come to training, we're actually going to have them in the, the yeah. training thing now. So I'm taking out that old stand because we don't do nothing for us. We put an ego in there. So it's going we, to be... We a, believe in batteries. Batteries are great, actually. It's not just... Look, it's, it's economical because they last longer. And they're actually practical in a way that cars aren't practical. But they, they last longer. They're easy. Like this maintenance. You can tip them on their side. You can just release the handle and they stop turning around. They're quiet, which is a big thing. If you're pushing a noisy mower all day, you get... That guy's wear, wear earmuffs. And, and, and it really affects your hearing. The vibration. Yep. Some of them have... Um, People have to retire early due to the RSI and they get in there. <laughs> yeah. Their wrist and and, all sort and, of stuff. and so these are, these are much better deals. I reckon within a couple of years, we're going to find, you know, even most of our franchises are moving towards battery powers. Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, that's a good one. And, and it's also good good client PR too because people are very aware of the environment these days. So you go around with the signs on your trailer about how we're environmentally sensible and, and stuff and how we're quieter and things. We're not going to wake neighbours. by you know, It's it's a very, very big thing for us. Reducing compliance with the, the early start <coughs> as well with the yeah. blowers and all sort of stuff. So. A lot of places like schools and, and, yes. and retirement homes, you can't mow within certain hours at all. So 
is actually becoming becoming great. I, I love them actually. I reckon I reckon battery powered mowers are a long way ahead of battery powered cars in terms of being practical. Yeah, they definitely are. It's going to get better. And better. Like, I mean, you don't care if a car's noisy, but you don't want a mower to be noisy. That's true. So I'll kick into questions and comments. There's heaps of questions and comments. We've got like 35, so we're going to try and whip through. Ooh, so. ooh, I know, because you always see it. We're going to try and whip through. All right. So, uh, okay. I can't have one of my gas bags. Keep I on. know. Ricky Jerg. Ricky Jerg has gone. His routine is sitting watching the telly, and we made Wednesday night our fish and chips, so he can watch you both. So they watch us generally on a Wednesday Fish and well, chips well. watching space. So back to next week on Wednesday. Well, fish and chips is all very well. It's nice, but I tell you what, get out and have a run afterwards, Ricky, <laughs> and, and and burn off some of that extra fat that you're taking on because you don't need it. <laughs> oh, Sasha, chips are awful, actually. They really are. They're so tempting. Well, Sasha Henry's gone for a quick question. <coughs> Hi from Jim's Mom will go. How do you brush cut along a colour bond fence without staining it? It's a unique question. We've never had that staining one before. Staining it without staining it without maybe damaging it. I don't know. Really? Does it stain it? It says staining it, so it, well I've got it passed through to me as staining. It might be damaging it. I don't know. My interpreter's on the other end there. They're writing them through, so it might be a spelling mistake. Oh, I don't know. I've never I've never tried it. The so, thing about the, the brush cutters is that they're they're designed so they don't ring bark trees, so they really don't have a lot of a <coughs> So you know the metal fences, right? You obviously get the things at the side, obviously maybe dam damage. Do you ever come across many of them in your day? No, because we don't we don't have many metal fences in Melbourne. Most of their um <coughs> the the paling ones, yeah, the wooden ones, right? Yeah, so I I, I really don't know how, how if it is a problem. I wouldn't have thought it was a major problem, mm. really. In any sense, anyway, if you cut it pretty neat, there's a little bit of a stain. Would it, would it be noticeable? I think mostly important to look at and make it look neat. Yeah, let's talk to the other franchisees at the meeting. Or also, or... It depends too whether they whether they're straight. If you actually if you've got a fight, if if, the, if it's a straight edge like that, and you've got enough control, you can basically cut it without. Without even touching the fence, you just cut the grass. Right. It, it, it seems surprising, but when you use these things for hour upon hour upon hour, as, as mowing contractors do, you get very, very good control of, of, the, of the actual. Oh yeah, definitely. We've been out of franchisees before for filming. They, they just hold it that straight, and they're just un unbelievable. Yeah. I it's, tried to do. I stuffed up a lawn within one it's minute. It's very fast. I mean, you, yeah. you can you can you can do an edging job about as fast as you could walk. Yeah, they do. They look, yeah, walk fast, walk and bang away they go. Well, I was go. one of the first contractors in Australia to have one. And, and Shindawa, I, I love them. That's yeah. fantastic. Shikatani. Yeah. Oh, it's a Shikatani. I always say Shikatani. Shikatani. That's the one. Not, oh, keep... not around anymore, but they, they were great. We'll keep going here now. So it's Naomi Bonard's gone. My brother and sister in law own the Wagga Wagga Jim's Dog Wash business. They, they have support... very good taste in business ownership. <laughs> they support six children and have a good work life balance. They do. Now, thanks, Jim. That's awesome. Wonderful. Now, Ricky Jergen's gone with a unique question here. Hi, Jim. If you already have a territory but haven't done anything with it, can you change your mind and select another territory? Yeah, of course. You can then, Ricky. That's the answer. So, yeah. how does she do with that? Does she email her franchise or does she? Yeah, you just go talk to your franchise or say you like a different different territory. It, it's it's actually it's fine really. People do change churches and have the time for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. So Ricky, just email through and it can be done. Mitch, Mitch Clark's gone here. Jim, why did you actually shave the beard? And he's gone. Why and how long ago did you shave the beard? Off. So two questions in a row. So he needs to know from ah, Mitch Clark. Okay. Two thousand. I was single and my beard was going grey. And you do not need to look older when you're forty-seven and looking for a wife. <laughs> so I shaved it off purely for that reason. It's purely for women. Yeah. I, I actually, I actually got got a few about a decade off my age by doing that. And I found a beautiful wife, and now that's all right. I don't, I don't need to. I can, so, I can, I can do anything I like now. She's, she, she's so besotted. She even thinks I'm good looking still. <laughs> <laughs> and if I grew a beard, I don't suppose she'd mind it anyway. <laughs> Might tickle a bit when I kissed her. So the answer is being a single man needs to look his best a few yeah. years younger off. There we go. Thanks, that one, Mitch. That's the first time of your question, I reckon. Ryan Christopher's gone, hey, Jim and Joel. I know Jim listens to a lot of audio books, but was wondering if he listens to any music and what's his favourite genre? Oh, yeah, I listen to music a lot, actually. I, I was just listening this afternoon. Um, what I like, um, I was listening to Vaughan Williams' fantasy on a theme of Thomas, Thomas Tarles, which is which is very sad, very tragic, but very emotional. It makes you feel was very like inspired. Orchestra or what is yeah, it's it? all, it, it, orchestral it, it, music. It's massed, massed violins. But I also okay. like different things like um, a bit of Cat Stevens. There's no like Tupac of, or Biggie Smalls or nothing like that? Uh, just all over the place too. A little bit of Handel. Um, Joseph Handel? Handel, yeah. Handel's great. I love Handel. Um Listening to uh, the, the Jerusalem, I like hymns, a lot, a lot of Christian music, of course. Yeah, which is re which is really good. So, no, no gangster rap or anything like that, like uh, the young kids today. Uh, not really, no. no. I mean, I'm, I like folk. I'm, I'm just some folk fucking, music. Yeah, I, yeah. I like um, Seekers, old style stuff. The Seekers, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, actually, I'm, I'm modern yeah. with my kids. They like listening to 1940s stuff. 
At really? Least, yeah. 1940s? No, back, at, back in the t- stuff you'd listen in films. Like Ella World Fitzgerald or something yeah, like that? Kind of that stuff, sort of yeah. stuff, like Nat King Cole, that old school. They're going for that. Yeah. Okay. So so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with it because I like films movies from the 70s and they're yeah, going yeah. back to the 40s, dude. You know like the Beatles or anything like that back in the day or Rolling Stones? or? No, I was never, never that supposed to be. No. Nah. Okay, there we go, Ryan. That's a good question. Then there's another question here. This is a this is a beauty. We haven't had this one before. Also, what's Jim's opinion on what he thinks if there are side effects on a baby's personality de- development depending on the genre of music played to them, e.g. a baby listening to Mozart compared to a baby played no music? Nah, it's all garbage. <laughs> it's all garbage. The, 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 the Mozart baby genius thing is rubbish. What you need is, is, is don't just put your kid down, listen to Mozart, talk to them. Talk to them. Talk to your kids. And, and, and just engage with them. That's the biggest thing. That's, got, that's going to develop the, the, the mind better than anything else. Just getting interested in what they're interested in. I have a great thing because having a very flexible lifestyle, I work pretty weird hours at times. And, you know, people I'm on the phone at 10 o'clock at night and emails and stuff. But I take my kids to school. I pick them up, even during the day. <coughs> and we talk about things. I talk to my, to my kids about conservation, about the environment. I talk about science, about evolution, about the ice ages, all kinds of things. Just always talking to them, exchanging ideas and stuff mm. like that. So, yeah, not always. It's something that's just gossip about their friends and stuff. <laughs> just talk and interact. Talk, talk to your kids. Spend time with them. Have a family dinner. Don't sit in front of a television. I'm not. Some people today just sit side by side and they watch TV. Never, never watch TV while you're having dinner. It's a great question, Ryan. We've never had that one asking no, for baby it's, advice. It's, That's it's a good one. Good question. It's a good question, Ryan. I'd say play Biggie Smalls to it. Get some, get some swag about the baby. All right. So Jamie Lawrence has gone, would love more info on the battery setup as I can't make the numbers add up. Jim's mowing Mornington. Love more info on the battery. Do you mean Jim's battery setup as I can't I don't make... mind you what you mean by that. It's more expensive to set up because, because it does cost to get the equipment, then, but you've you got to bear in mind certain things. First of all, an electric mower is inherently a lot more long-lasting than a... Than a, a um, the <coughs> oil, the, yeah, the, than, yeah, than the a, internal combustion engine. So so that that's a fairly major effect because because it's okay to have a cheap mower, but if it's going to wear... In a year's time, a mower is worn out. But with an electric motor on it, it's got a much, much longer life. So the numbers on this, you can retrofit the solar panel. So if you've got a trailer, you can actually retrofit the solar panel, which yeah, is around five, needs, plus it, the gears around. It just needs a bit of a change to the, yeah. to the setup at the side so you can fit the battery. Because what they do is they have a big battery, which is charged by the solar panel. And also, if necessary, put on the car itself, it can through an Anderson plug. And then, you, and then you just plug the battery in, and then you drive to the then you then you you mow the lawn, and then you put the battery in. It's being charged by the time you've driven to the next yeah. job. Yeah, that whole pack and that deal, Jamie, will be finalised probably early next year, and we communicate to all because that's what we're really, really push not it. talking a lot. But the thing is, it's not just a matter. Of, first of all, the mower's going to last longer, and and it's it's a real thing because they think talking about electric cars. One of the things that's going to put a lot of mechanics out of business because they certainly won't need the maintenance because electric motors are far more durable. But the other thing too is it's the downtime. You know, if your your mower breaks down, you have to take it to be repaired. You might be out. It's like an hour and a half. What well, you, you you've lost 150 bucks. So when you do that a few times, it doesn't take much to make up for having a new vehicle. And then and then things like just the sound, like like you want to listen to music or something nice when you or a talking book when you when you when you're mowing lawns. If it's quiet, it makes a big difference, and the, and just the ease of using it, and the fact that you just go and it starts. You don't have to pull this thing. Yeah, yeah. It's it's they really are quite magic. I I, I love them. I think it's I think it's it's, it's time has come. We're we're actually promoting it in a big way. In fact, the the setup is being used almost every day. Someone's yeah. taking out the trailer. Oh, they're flogging the gear. <laughs> the gear's getting a getting a oh, workout. We're getting we yeah. get videos done. Yes, correct. Yep. So we're going to show people how it's working. We did do an original video, but they want to readjust it, so we're going to readjust and do some more stuff Well, the person that. we took it from is the person who's already using an electric mower. So we want somebody who's using a petrol, to that, petrol yeah. mower and then just a comparison, Correct. which is better. Yeah, which we'll organise. But the guys are at taking the gear and road testing. It's great for ego as well. Now, Glenn Sharp's going in. Hi, Jim and Joel. What's your favourite electric whippersnipper? I love steel. So he's using electric steel whippersnippers. Yeah, well, we use the ego stuff mostly. Ego, yeah. Ego's the yeah, one ego, that we've been getting. Ego's great everything. I tell you what, I mean... I, steel's I, a great I, brand, though. Still is a great brand, yeah. but 
Here you go, Scott. It's very trendy. It's very you know, good looking stuff. It's, it just says green and it's got these lights and things, which is quite good actually. It looks pretty futuristic. It's quite um, it's, it's quite impressive. Like I'm sure people would stop you and actually say, "What's have a look at it?" It's nice design. I love the lights too because often, very often, when you're mowing lawns in in in, um, I used to get clients to turn the porch light on so I could finish mowing the lawns in the grass because you get so busy. <laughs> That's but true. You've got little actual lights on your mower. Lighten the way ahead. It's pretty futuristic looking. It's nice, really cool gear. And and as time goes by, the batteries are going to get better and, and eventually cheaper. It's they going will. To be, it's going to be a big thing. So Tony Roberts has gone, great idea, Jim's Monopoly. Um, yes. Glenn Sharp's gone, I've got a petrol rover, had it for four years. Then he's gone, what's your thoughts on rover? I've got a mower, had it for four years and can't fault it, which is great. It's not so much the mower, it's the engine too, though. I mean, it depends on the kind of engine. We find that for contractors, um, franchisees, professionals, Honda motors last a lot better than the um, Briggs and Stratton ones do. Yeah, people always reference the Honda. A lot of fans of Honda, which is great. But if you if you're if you're a you know domestic user, then basically they rust out. They can last for ten years, but they, they rust apart. And and ten years isn't much growth really. It's like like it's that's like having a a contract of what they might do in a month. Mm. But he's had for four years the rover, so it's obviously going well from. But as a contractor or is it a private? Person? He's a contractor, I presume. As a contractor. He's a, he's a mining franchisee, I presume. Well, I hope you are, Glenn if, Sharp. If, I'm if, assuming that. <laughs> if you're using the same petrol mower for four years, that's incredible. That's a really, really durable bit of equipment. He's saying I used to work at Masters and know them well. Oh, that's cool. So we got one here from Crystal Sean Ward, and he goes, "Love our lifestyle. Thanks, Jim. I'm Honda all the way." There's a Honda fan. Yes. From Crystal Sean I, I must say, when I, but towards the end of my own career, I was very much into Hondas. Yeah? yeah. Okay. There's a good plug for Honda. Um, okay. So 65 people watching now, which is great. We're going to keep going through the questions back on the live feed now. So those are questions from the other pages. We want to make sure we keep everyone engaged. Live feed questions right now. We're going to go through from where we were before. Now, there's one here from Zane goes, Jim, how often do you use gym services? Do you get them to mow your lawns and do you have to pay? <laughs> Um, yes, of course I pay. These are independent businesses. But based on what your garden looks like at the moment, you haven't had anyone in here for a while. Um, well, actually, no, I've got Eric Adams. He's starting next week. He's coming to do it. He's coming Current to do it. Current mine franchisee? Yeah, he's, he's there. He's, All right, he's got a fair bit of work ahead of him. What's he going to do there? Well, no, this is just around the house. Oh, okay. Well, I've got five acres. Yeah. Most of it gets mowed by somebody from the conference centre. Um, but they just have a ride on and run over it, run, run over it. But yeah. the um, the actual area around the house, which is a bit a bit messy, Eric's going to fix it up. I'm, I'm confident. Eric's a great guy. He's got a great record. I always check people out on on their surveys before I employ them. That's but, true. Yeah, you got I, the advantage I, there. I, I yeah. know he's good. But you can do the same thing by going to Jim's Plus yourself. But I but I, I just check the surveys first. And Glenn Sharp's gone here. He's from the Lawn Doctor <coughs> in Camden. So independent business, the Lawn Doctor in Camden. Glenn Sharp's tuning and watching, which is great. And yeah, thanks for letting. Cool. Well, I hope that's you pick awesome. up a few ideas. I've got a young bloke. Um, Peter at my church, he's, he rang me today just for advice on how to do with a client. He said he damaged the, like, claiming he damaged the car with the brush cutter. Oh, it happens all, oh, that one. So yeah. I actually talked to him about it and I said, well, yeah, I don't think you did probably. I think client's probably taking advantage of you. Said, yeah, it happens a lot, a, unfortunately. Take a tough line. We had one just, just this week where the client was complaining that the, claiming that he damaged the their car with the ride-on, not the brush cutter. But but he, he showed me pictures of the, the ride on. Yeah, he's the one. Yeah. Obviously, that they yeah, 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 yeah. side But he showed me pictures of the cut, and there was rust in them. And this happened a few days ago. Right? How could they be rusty in just a few days? So yeah. I said, I, as far as I'm concerned, you didn't do that, hmm. and 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 you had no responsibility, and the client's just taking advantage. That's it. How could how could it be rusting? Cars do not rust that fast. That's true. Well, it happened all the time in insurance. We used to see it. Well, we had another case too where, where somebody said you, you used a rag and it caused his damage. Oh, that's a big no one. No way. That's yeah. ridiculous. It was quite, it was quite, it's quite frustrating seeing them take advantage of the franchisee because yeah. they People have to People say the customer's yeah. always right, but no way no, they're not. Sometimes. sometimes. And anyway, my franchisees are my primary customers. So that's right. If we think they're in the right, we'll back them 100%. So Crystal Sean Ward's gone here. We mow about 30 lawns a day and our Hondas with maintenance, they keep on going. That's great to hear. 30 lawns a day is a lot. Wow, that's good. That's heaps. Now let's keep doing some more questions here now. Eric Jergen has gone for a suggestion. Have you thought about <coughs> gifting a bear to franchisees that have a five-star rating? You might be out of pocket well, a bit if we do that. There's too many. We'd be running <laughs> out of bears. That's right. It might be fair. I actually fair had a great conversation with the franchisee last night. One of my 10-year veterans, I ring him up to congratulate and thank them. And on the, on the, on the process, we actually got, went through some of his old surveys, yeah. and he went through the wording and stuff and explained why the rating was unfair and I, and there was good evidence for it. I just, I changed them. So he ended up with it. He went from 4.7 to 5 So he lifted, lifted it up right there. Yeah, on the spot, which there was nice. Go. He only had 21 leads, but it made it, he said it was his best, best, best out of person I could have given him. <laughs> yeah, that's good but to hear. Good. He's a, obviously a great operator. And it was, some of the things just weren't 
fair they just the way they were put and so forth there we go so matt matt sheldon's tuning in so hey guys so hey matt matt was always i think we haven't had you on the live feed for a while matt so it's great if you're watching the live feed six seven people it's great hit a like on the one of the live feeds leave a question or comment or share it because it helps us out a lot to keep getting the message out of jim um sal john's gone i meant i will come to melbourne so yes the offer's there sal if you come to melbourne yeah. during a training week's the best to do it so please email us to do, you know the training week is come on and you can have a dinner with jim and Ideally sort of not Tuesday night because I have my Bible study group. But Wednesday night. Monday or Wednesday. Wednesday is the ideal one, Sal, because we do this live in front of an audience. So. Yes, yes, come on Wednesday. Come, come on Wednesday night during training. The then Luke McGraw has gone here. Jim, what's the best mower you've used over the years? He's a top fan badge, so thanks for commenting, Luke. Well, I, as I said, I like the battery-powered ones. I haven't used them a lot, but I just love I just love the quiet, the lack of vibration and stuff. But before that, Honda. Honda, use Honda. okay. So Peter Walsley's gone. Well, I haven't mowed lawns for quite a few years. <laughs> so I'm not I'm not the real expert in, in, the, in them now that I used to be. That's true. Peter Walsley's gone. Seen a meme the other day. He's gone, Jim's line my, landmine detections. So I'm going Jim's landmine detections. That, that, that sounds a good idea. That's quite useful. Landmine detection. That's, <laughs> that's quite handy. <laughs> Picked yeah. up with robots these days. That's true. Now, Jared Bywater's Mind gone. Mind you, I don't know how many, how many, how big you're going to have in Melbourne. Now. How many, how many, how many houses have landmines in them these days? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe some jilted ex-wives or something. I don't know. Yes, well, know. That, is, that is true. But I mean, if, if <laughs> landmines have become a problem, we will definitely have a landmine we'll be in that space, right? protection service. But, uh, That's exactly right. Jared Bywaters, who tunes in every week in comments, so g'day to Jared, who's a Jim's mining franchise owner. He goes, Jim, does taking unserviced leads from other regions affect your lead priority in your actual region? Yes, it does. It just counts. It just counts the leads that you get. It doesn't get, doesn't count where they come from. Mm -hmm. But mind you, regions can be pretty arbitrary. You can be just on the border of a region, so you can do a job that's like in the next, you know, hundred meters away, and it's in it's in the next region. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you've travelled further. That's a ripping. That's a ripping question, Jared. That's yeah. a that's a very unique one. We haven't had that in a while. Oh, I don't think we've had that one ever. Um, Jim's meaning is gone. Jim's meaning. We love Jim's meaning. We've got to always give Jim's meaning a shout out. What does the most of the Facebook memes on the official Jim's page. Who does most of the Facebook memes on the official Jim's page? That's Ben and Jake in the background. Um, they're iconic creators. When we get you down eventually, Matt, you'll meet them. So they're young fellas as well, both age 24 and 22. So they're quite up with it. So they know the trending memes and stuff as well. And um, they do a great job. There's some nice funny ones they get around. Then David McDonald's gone to Jim's ball tampering, which was after the cricket incident. That was one of the entries. <laughs> so yes, Jim's ball tampering, we don't. Uh, we don't go with that one. There's a mass market really in that behind that one, especially if you're going to be talking test matches and stuff. Well, so there's on. a lot of ball tampering going in, in India, so maybe that sort of stopped the Indian and doctoring the pitches over there. Yes. Sorry to anyone from who's an Indian cricket fan watching us to put one in there. Maybe the, the English as well, I the Poms. I don't, oh, the Poms are the, the worst. Poms, definitely for them with the um, the mints on the ball and all that sort of stuff and all uh, the cheating they will do. Derek Spice has gone, Jim's birth control with a laughing face. Good old Derek, he emails every week, Derek. I love hearing Derek from Derek. Birth control. No, I'm not afraid of birth. I think we should we should populate our parish. <laughs> there we go. That's and a... you're not doing a good job. This this guy here doesn't even tend to get married. No, no. Just just like just like some. There's too much choice out there, Derek. Unfortunately, so you can't make a right decision. No, nah, I don't. That's I don't think Jim. I've been look, been listening to Archie's stories about he's saying you could have had four houses if you didn't get married. So. You lost four houses in divorces, so I'm not, I'm not too keen on doing that. No, um, yeah, well, I lost a few houses <laughs> to myself after being divorced a few times. I'm, this, I'm learning from you guys. It's but you know, you got to keep on looking until you find the right one, and I have, so that's it. Yeah, I'm happy to keep on looking. That's all right. <laughs> Eric Jenkins has gone here. Why don't you have a special night instead of the dinner where you go to the screening of Star Wars with Jim? Of course, it would need to be gold class, a great way to raise money with something that Jim's love. So there's obviously a new Star Wars coming out. Are you excited about that? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I always Star Wars, Wars with Jim. I don't know how much interest there would be, Eric. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think I'm attracted. We didn't have anyone I mean, take up based to... based on this pathetic response to the dinner. I mean, <laughs> or the lawn. I, I, I don't think anyone wants to even talk to me anymore. I mean, really. Oh come on, that's the other people. Choosing. But Star Wars is good, actually. Uh, I, I I watched went through all the Star Wars with we got them on DVD at my farm, and and I watched them with my son. Yep. And he, he didn't know who who the, the bad guy was, so it was really fun. But that was that was done like about six months ago, and he's interested in watching them all again. Oh, has good. I love Star Wars. Yeah, it's well, good. we could do that, Eric. I guess if there's interest for anything, but the the, uh, the one we wanted to do last week was the lawn mowing. Jim actually mowing someone lawn for five hundred bucks for. We're going to split between something with the fires, and then uh, we'll put that offer still there. Five hundred bucks for Jim to come and mow your lawn. Yeah, well, as long as you're in Melbourne. As long as you're here, as long as you're in Melbourne. In I'm, a not gonna, I'm not going to go to Kings to mow a lawn for five hundred bucks. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, yeah, Melbourne area, but that's $500 offer still stands for people who want to mow for Jim to mow their lawn. 
Okay, let's keep going down here. Jim's memeing goes, hey man, meme memeing isn't that very profitable. I know it's not making, you bring a lot of joy to the world though, Jim's memeing. So unfortunately, monetizing that is probably not. Well, what's profitable is the system that allows them to, like like Jim's cod life winning because they were so good on social media. Now being good on social media, that's profitable. Oh, he is, he's good at social media. Of course Matt, he is. Matt, Matt's they, really good. They did a fantastic job, no doubt about it. He's very good. And then uh, here we go, Jim's, uh, Luke's gone here again. Jim, have you ever owned a used, re, used real or cylinder mowers? If so, what do you think of them? Have you ever owned, yeah, actually, you know, I did have a cylinder mower once, a long, long time ago. It was kind of the trouble is Melbourne lawns are too too uneven, and right. always, and always tend to get bumped, bounced around, and the, and the blades come away from the. the more the WA, edge. right? Aren't they the WA? The WA yeah. use them all the time. They use yeah. also use those mechanical blade edges and stuff. Yeah, but I, I think for Melbourne conditions, um, rotary mowers. WA is a different country. It really is. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, no, seriously. I mean, I mean, <laughs> they're, 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 they're if if you were going to divide Australasia um, culturally, you put New Zealand in the east coast of Australia and maybe South Australia in one country, and you put WA in somewhere else. They're just uh, totally totally alien. I used to live in Perth for eight years. You were not that different. Come on, you, no wonder you're so strange. <laughs> Actually, I, if I was the West Australia, I wanted to secede. I reckon it's completely unfair. They pay all this huge amount of tax, and they get so little back. That's true. All the minerals and, and, all and, and, and they have to pay all their money to pay. To, like Tasmania and South Australia, which are pathetically run. <laughs> Basket cases. We've got the politics here again somehow. That's all right. All good. We'll keep going. I'm not, I'm not knocking South Australians. I'm just knocking you've got pathetic governments, that's all. Especially in South Australia. I mean, you can imagine this is a government that's setting the whole place into a blackout in a modern country. How? Yeah, that was quite embarrassing. How incompetent yeah. is that? That was quite silly. But South one. Australians are great. You know, South Australia, per capita... Have done a more entrepreneurial thing within gyms than any other state. They like, yeah, they're great over there in it's, terms of franchising. Yeah, I love that's it. That's right. Because because you know it's, there's nothing else to do. You know, how do you nothing else on? to do? <laughs> <laughs> they got to start businesses. You go to the Rundle they're, Mall they're, gym and hang out. They're creative <laughs> entrepreneurial type. I have a great deal of respect for them. They've got an awful government. There we go. So Jim's meme has gone, you can now mow at 6 a.m. with no problem with the silent mower. Yes, Absolutely that's correct. Absolutely, you can. Haydar Hussain's tuned in and said, hi, gents. He's got the top fan badge. So Haydar's tuning in watching as always. We appreciate Hey, We've got heaps of Jim's cleaning content coming out. We've, the video packs are nearly ready to go and got heaps of them. So they're have coming you seen, out. Haydar, have you seen the Jim's cleaning? The cleaning hey. one will be up there on the far right. There we are. Haydar, Jim's cleaning bear. You want one of these, Jim's don't cleaning you? I mean, what, what home will be without a Jim's cleaning bear? And then Peter Wolsey going, what software are you using to broadcast this live stream? I'm very interested in the live stream setup. Uh, it's OBS, I think, which is free software, and the boys do a great job. Uh, OBS, and they do all their screen cards and stuff before. OBS is free, which is great. There's a lot of other ones you can get, but OBS at the moment, which they put on there. And we're going to get to some other questions on the other. So that was on the live. We're going to get back to them in, in a minute. Then here we go. We're going to try and whip through some of these ones left. There's heaps of questions and comments, guys, which is great. It's going to be tough because there's just four people we're going to have to pick out tonight. Let's look through some. Tony Roberts, who cleans Jim's house? From Tony and Laurie. Jim's cleaning in seafood in Adelaide. Uh, not Jim's cleaning. We, we tried. Mm -hmm. Tried a couple of people. People couldn't get anybody to do it at the time. So there's a lady, the Chinese lady, that Lee knows. She comes along and does it. Okay. It's fine. I think we've got Jim's cleaning at our house, so we use them, Tony. I've got the cleaning products in our house. I use, I use Jim's for most things, but it's not, I'm, not, I'm not fanatical about it. I mean, if I could find somebody who was private, who did a great job, I'd, I'd be okay to use them. It's just that Jim's you know, people are the best and, and they're good value. I love their products. I think their products are great. So that's yeah. something really good. And obviously the franchisees are great as well. We've got lots of content coming out of Jim's cleaning. It's going and to be exciting. And also because, especially for me, I, I, I know who they are. I, can, I can yeah. know somebody's good. I know quite well if I can get a Jim's person to clean the car or whatever it is, then, then I know they're going to be good. We've had heaps of gyms at the house lately. We've got antennas, we've got a dog wash, we've got yeah. mine guy coming. So John Renders going in, my mass port mower is four years old, does an average of 2,400 kilometres per year, still going strong. John Renders from Jim's mowing. G'day, John. Yeah, well, again, it's a Briggsy motor, so you, you've done well to maintain it. You probably maintain it better than I ever did. <laughs> I, I used to find my mowers that last a year, especially the ones with the Briggs motors. Yeah. Then Crystal Sean warns go, we, t we detect them with <coughs> the dog stuff. Yep. Denise Noble's going, hi, Jim. When are you going to up a open up a child care centre? No, never, never, never. It's not our area. It's yep. a totally... One thing I've learned from hard experience is you do not do things that you don't know. I understand the gym's business very well. Mobile services, yeah. Mobile services and anything related to that. Gym's Plus is great. You know, software to help our franchisees to do better. That's great. All those things are fantastic, but not, not nothing fixed. 
Yeah, we get requests for child mining here at training because obviously people want to bring their kids as well. We have, but we have a junior gym program, so the kids sit in the training and do it, and they get a little certificate at the end and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, they had a yeah. little kid last time actually. She, we, we gave her a certificate at the end. She was she was cool. Yeah, the photos on our website. That one. So Crystal Sean husband and, and beautiful actually during the training didn't make a peak. Yeah, very well behaved. Mm. Uh, Crystal, Sean Ward, husband and wife crew here in SA, full-time team. That's great. Husband and wife teams we love. And lots of people have husband and wife teams, which yes. is awesome. So yeah. it's definitely a family business. Now, here we go here. So let's keep going some more questions. In the near future, is it possible the Gym Script will release a new ad slash song? The last ad is old but still gold. Jimbo, Jimbo, off to work we go from Harrison Toff. Uh, I don't know. It's not my area. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. It depends if it's an effective advertising thing, I guess, on radio if, as a channel. If it's effective, we do it. If not, yeah. we're probably more we've digital. Got, we've got our new slogan. This one here, Your Local Expert. Your Local Expert, yeah. That's yeah, right. so Your Local Expert is what we're going to be pushing in 2020, <coughs> doing a lot of content around how our franchisees are locals. People who are non-customers of gyms don't think we're local. No. And they, the expert part, we want to reiterate that it's Well, local. they don't think we're expert because we do everything. They don't understand that one franchisee does one one area and we're very, very intensively trained in that area. Yeah. And they're local too. Exactly. So that's what we do on the day on the roads. Like the Nate from Pool Care he has all this chemical so knowledge. So come up with come up with a really jaunty song that brings in about being local and expert, and we, we'll look at it. Okay. Yeah. I don't know what bet you'd put it to, Harrison, but work on something yeah, and flick yeah, it through. Something something powerful and, and motivational. Here we go. Jim's meme is gone. What's to go after Throwback Thursday? Jim's ads. What year were they from? Did they did did he Jim star in them? Throwback Thursday. We post some old. There's some really old videos, like from 1990 something. It's just like Jim, this guy with the big, like pretty intense actor, going like Jim, 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 Jim. It's pretty catchy. I have to show them to you after. So I don't think you've seen him, um, Jim's memeing. So I have to show them to him. Now uh, Luke McGraw's gone. Jim is music to my ears. Your music to someone's ears, Jim. We haven't had that compliment before. That's nice. <laughs> Peter Walsley, I can see a new franchise after all these music questions. Jim's record stores. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know what would be in there. Fixed, fixed sites. Jim's music right. festivals, I reckon, would be good. Yeah, one of the most. One of the, I tell you, one of the worst yeah. mistakes you can make is because you're good at one business, you're good at something else. And I've made that mistake too many times. Unbelievable, <laughs> and, and, and lost so much money. Um, if I hadn't done that, I, maybe I would be on the rich list. But <laughs> not, <laughs> yeah, that could not, be the case. Not, not actually, but but still, um, don't don't go into things you don't understand. And, mm -hmm. and this is why I think too. It's great talking to people who've been with us for 10 or 15 or 20 years. The fact is, that people people don't stay with a thing long enough to learn how to do it. Yeah. So they, they they start a thing and they do it for a few years and then they go to something else and they try that for a while and they go to something else. Whereas if you stick to the same thing and you keep on saying, how can I do that better and better and better and better, and you improve, it's quite extraordinary how good you can become for it. Yeah, I mean, but even like we have some franchisees in the second year just doing great guns because they're just so keen to learn and mm. listen to their franchise and all that sort of stuff. Now, Eric Jergens has gone. The only reason that Ricky Jergens is asking so many questions is that she wants to win the bear. She's not a true follower like me or a top fan. I don't think anyone's as keen follower as you, Eric, because we appreciate your support. You're probably right up there with the top top three viewers. So she wants to win the bear. So um, we'll see what we can do next time. I think you come to the office a bit, Ricky. So we'll see what happens. I'm just trying to think what the best. There's been so many good questions today. I can't really think. I'll keep going. I've got heaps here, so I'm trying to flip through them. Seth Wingard's gone. Hello. Thank you for so much for my three shirt. My teacher and mum would love a book. And my little sister would love a teddy bear. Well, it's not a, we're not That's, a charity. Nah. <laughs> You've got to, well, I'm seriously so grateful for your company. You are all so great and friendly. You're awesome, Jim. So he's trying to suck up a little bit to no, get the no, free no. stuff. I, I, need, I, need a, I need a really good question that, 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 to, get, to get a bear. Otherwise, you can order them. They're not that expensive. <laughs> he goes here again. I'd love a teddy bear and also, and also a book for my <laughs> mum and teacher. Uh, that's all well and good they can um, actually download that online and there's an audio book as well yeah and they can download this one too yeah but leave a question there Seth no compliments won't get your favours tonight question question comment uh, alright stop trying to butter me up come on <laughs> ask, a, ask a really good question there we go Jared Bible has gone Jim have you always been a Christian or did you come to find God later in life 27 I went, to, I went to a Christian school the one across from the road from head office Edinburgh being oh really and being agnostic never wrapped my head around it Huh. All right. I like that stuff. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. It, it's it, it took me a long time. I became an atheist by the time I was about 14, and then it took me 13 years to find God. And it was an amazing, amazing, joyful experience. I, I, I just I just love it. You know, to me, one of the, the, the highlights of the week is being at church with my wife alongside me and my family. And I just I just love that. I love that. It's it's. it's and it was age 27, wasn't it? At the age of 27, yeah. it's, it's the two great turning points of my life was becoming a Christian at the age of 27 and meeting Lee when I was 48 years old. Those are two miracles that have changed my life for the better.
There we go. I'm the complete opposite, Jared. So I'll leave that. I'll leave that there. I'm working on him, but <laughs> oh, never gonna, never gonna happen. This this flying spaghetti monster is what I believe in, Jared. All right. So David McDonald's gone. I have an AEG. That's a Richard Dawkins stuff. I have an AEG whipper snipper. It's great. I need another battery, but I just start and then charge it whilst I mow the lawns. I have yeah, an AEG. No, no. Yeah, that's yeah. David from Jim's Antenna. Yeah, AEG is not bad. I, it's, it's mine. It's my mower at my farm. And Jared Bywell has gone. Electrics is all well and good for those who push mowers, but haven't seen anything for ride-on mowers, which is seventy percent of my business. They are they are working on ride-on mowers, aren't yes, they? They are. They're not far away. They're not far away. And actually, away. probably quite practical too, because because the the, the mower. The big problem, you don't want too much weight in the battery. So with a ride-on mower, you can have a very big battery. I know I've heard of one that goes for about five hours. I've seen some, yeah, I've seen some stuff in America they're looking to bring over. So mm. I think they're all over there and they're sort of just waiting to get it. I think know. I think it'll come. I think it's the it's the big coming thing. Yeah, that's true. So we'll get to some more questions here. Seth Wingard's going, I recommend Jim's mail to everyone in my street. That's great, Seth. He's Thank you, new, Seth. He's going to get you guys and stuff. We're always so friendly and you guys are always happy to help out. True Aussie Company, 100 stars. Gee whiz, he's, he's, a, he's a charmer, Seth. Definitely charmer, but you got to leave a question. Leave a question or a comment. And Stephanie, particularly, yeah. particularly off beat, something off beat. Get you, might, might get you a beer or something. Now, Stephanie yeah. Paddock from Jim's Termite and Pest Control, I think they're on next week. Is Jim looking at ways to become more sustainable and environmentally friendly from the future from Montana? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, we're we're a big fan of, of environmental things. I mean, I mean, the whole business of obviously electric mowers is great, um, battery powered mowers, and and just just everything you can do to reduce travel because travel is the biggest biggest carbon footprint around. So if we can get our guys going into the street and mowing six lawns in the street, for example, it's a lot more cost effective and a lot more environmentally friendly. So. That's very true. Very much, very much so. And we'll yeah. see you next week, uh, Linton and Stephanie. Matt Sheldon's gone here. Jim, your messy garden is great for the training. <laughs> Matt Sheldon up in Jim's mind. You don't do much for it, the, you, you people. I, I can tell you that I come home expecting a five-acre you know, bowling green. And what do I find? I hadn't noticed you'd been there. <laughs> just practice the pruning and things. And Darren Doyle's gone. Hello, Joel and Jim. Darren from Jim's Carpet Cleaning Thornton. I think your top fan badge is great. Um, I have a Massport mower with a two-stroke Briggs. It's 30 years old. Jim, thank you for yeah, the email. Yeah, but you're not a contractor. You're a carpet cleaner. Come on. But Jim, he's also going to thank you for your the email after my first year, first month in business. Oh, thank you for thank you for. So it's nice and early, which is great, Darren. I, thanks I for... appreciate that. It's, I love I love those one month emails. I really do. I think most people actually do write back to me, and it's wonderful to be able to sometimes give advice, but mostly just to hear how well they're doing, which is really very positive. Well, it reinforces what you're doing, right? Doesn't it? It it it, 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 it lifts my day, and 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 when I hear the franchise has been so helpful and that how wonderful they've been, which is usually the story, and usually they're busy and and stuff, and sometimes they do have some issues though. They're really it's 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 incredibly useful, and mm-hmm. I, I say, hey, we're doing this, for example. 30, 30, 30 years, it's pretty pretty going well, which is great. Derek Spice, you've got to answer Derek Spice's question because I'll get an email from Derek after in the night. He goes, Jim, what's the best part of your job? Uh, getting getting feedback from franchisees. Not ask Jim? <laughs> no. Nah, 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 right. I don't mind it. But, <laughs> well, if it comes in, you ask Jim. But, but, but honestly, anybody telling me that they've had a great life, that's the... That gives me the biggest buzz there is. So emails from franchisees and sometimes those... So oh, more emails, emails from Derek? Emails, things on Ask Jim, anything yeah. at all. It's that sense of, of satisfaction. You've got, to have a, you've got to have something to do with your life that, that's got a meaning to it. I was Today I had lunch with the um, IT guys. And it, they were packed in the room. There must have been about 30 of them. There were so many of them. But, <laughs> the um, department, yeah. But just one thing was, was to thank them for what they'd done and how much difference they made and how... In, they're not just coming to code and get a salary. They're actually changing the lives of thousands of people that we're getting more leads through. We're getting better support for our franchisees. Mm. That, that what they do matters. And I, I, I really want them to understand how important that is. And I think people in gyms generally have that feeling, including franchisors and office staff, that we, we have a, a mission. It's not just a job. That's it. So we're going to go to a few more questions here on the other live feeds. We're going to get to those ones in there. We're going to rip through them because there's heaps of questions. There's heaps tonight, which has been great. Okay, so we've got one. Glenn, Glenn Sharp has gone, I'd like to ask, I'm opposition to Jim's. What is the best invoice program to have? He's in opposition. Yeah, he's in opposition to us. What's he saying? What's the best invoice program to have? I don't know. Guys use different things. Well, they use, they use a lot, mostly use Zero these days. Also, MyUp's pretty, pretty Zero powerful. Zero MyUp and there's QuickBooks and but stuff. Down, but down the track a bit, we're, uh, by March next year, we're, we've got this program, Jim's Jobs, which we're developing for our franchisees, um, which is a program that... Um, that schedules their work, but also has some basic accounting 
um, things in place, and we're, we're going to put more in place with time. Yeah. Because most of our franchisees eventually shouldn't need a separate accounting program. Now, that's going to be available to independents too. It'll cost about 30 bucks a month, and we'll give you a free trial too. So if you're around next year and you just want to keep an eye on things, um, you know, we, we are making this available to, to outsiders as well. I think better yet, brand yourself as Jim's mowing, Glenn. Well, Come across. <laughs> I had to throw that. I had to do a couple of I've got to, so I've I... got to say that, that um, <laughs> if you've got a great business and a great track record, um, you can pick up surplus jobs through Jim's Plus, but then uh, sometime maybe come across to him. I'm sure he's doing well in his own business, though, That's which is great to see he's come on to watch, actually. It's, it's pretty yeah. awesome, actually. It's quite, quite nice. Now, I want to get to some more questions here, Jim, just because we've got heaps coming. Sorry, sorry to cut you off. I want to get one from a cleaning franchisee. He's left us a question here, which I think is quite I think so. Dina's gone here. Dina Majan. Uh, hi, Jim. How do we address clients that cancel their services? How many cancellations a year per regular client? Do you find it normal? A fortnightly client, that's 26 year, uh, twenty six time a year cleans. If they cancel five times a year, that's a quarter of the income and time wasted. We asked the question two weeks ago but well, ran out of time to well, answer. Well, it sort of depends on when they cancel. Yeah. Now, if they cancel at the time you turn up, you've got to explain to the client that, look, I understand that, okay, in future, please let me know, because because it's not reasonable to do it when you turn up. Now, if they do it again, I would drop the client. Oh yeah, definitely. But if they're simply cancelling because they don't need it done, like say during the winter time for a mowing job, for example, um, that's quite reasonable. They just, they just ring you up or text you or email you or something and say, look, it doesn't need doing. Could you leave for two more weeks? That's fine. That's reasonable. Mm. The point of it is too, we're there to satisfy the client, make them happy. So if they don't need something done, it's not our interest to do it. Go and get another job. I mean, there's a lot of work out there. 180,000 unserviced leads we knocked back last year. Well, another kind of question from Dana, which I'll flow in there. And I also email Jim at Jim's on it. You've got franchisors, and obviously uh, they're great to talk to and fellow franchisees. Dana's has gone as well. We heard new franchisees are getting new books when they start up. What about older franchisees? We missed out. Oh, look, if there's any franchisees who wants this book here, they've been around for a while, just send them a copy. Are getting new books, yeah. I guess if you just hit us up on the page, we can send you a book. It's no problem at all. I think, yes. I think that's what you mean. New books is the new franchisees are we giving them books? Yeah, out? We, we just we just give them this one. We're giving the customers a fan, right? Every customer a fan. Yeah, right. Look, if you're a franchisee, I've been around for a while, and you want to copy the book, just tell me. I'll, I'll post you one personally, personally autographed, and that's it. It had to be autographed, dedicated exactly right. to you. There we sure. go. So do that. If you do that, dangerous message. We, to we page. value our franchisees. I tell you what, if I can do anything to make you happier, we do. And this is what with these with these the ten year things that we send them, they can use. They can put. They, and the shirts as well. They can put the shirts yeah, yeah. on, special shirts yeah. on, and they get they can put the sign on their on their vehicle. Poor old Denise, though. What I did to is I put up on social media saying, you know, we've had all these long term franchisees, and we had franchisees going, oh, I never got mine, all this sort of stuff. So poor old Denise was having to post out a few others. There's a guy called Flaggy, you know, Flaggy from the forum. Neil, yeah, yeah, Flaggy. Neil, Neil was straight onto it. Left some comments in there, and Denise got up and about and and rang him up and got one out to him. So we do want to appreciate mm. people who who've been around a long term. Absolutely, we're, really we're trying to think of ways to recognise them. And when I ring people, and it's a great actually one of the high points of my week, I must say, just just to just to thank them and say how much we appreciate having them with us for this length of time. It's, it's wonderful. Mostly very uplifting stories. Like a lot of stuff about it too that I can share with other people as well about why they've done so well and how great their lifestyle is. Like the guy who said, who's been going for I think he was. 15 years, something like that. And he said, I work four days a week and knock up at one o'clock. Not bad. Not bad if you can do that. And makes $200,000 a year. I mean, I mean. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the wrong game. I don't know if you can see my face when I heard that figure right there. Gee whiz. I'll tell you what. It's not bad. So Jim's meaning has gone here. How long would a typical battery-powered mower last? How long would a battery-powered mower last? Well, typically? well, we don't know, actually, because we haven't had them around that long. But, I mean, I gather that I know I was picking to somebody who's got a Nissan Leaf and it's been got to the stage where it only goes about 100 k's on, on a charge. So they yeah. do deteriorate with time. But I would think they deteriorate a lot slower than a than a, um, a petrol power mower would, would, would deteriorate. Yeah. So I we, we really can't tell that yet. But they're going to get better and they're going to get cheaper. And, and it, it, it's the future is electric. I Firmly believe in that. So we've got one here from Glenn Sharp. He's got a few things. Glenn has gone, would you consider it sending it to me? What will you offer me? Thank you for letting me ask these questions. I'd be happy to get a hold of one of those signed books. Signed to. Would, would you, we can give you a customer a fan book to, to Glenn, to the opposition. We can give him one, a signed book. He's a first-time watcher. I was going to, well, I had his name written down anyway, so maybe we can give him as one of the signed books to the opposition. Which one? What do you reckon? 
All right, Glenn, we can do that. Done. Give us a um, DM with your details and we'll sort it out for you. <laughs> I warn you, you might find it so interesting you want to cover franchisee. Exactly right. That's what I'm hoping we do. It's, it's a bit not, of... It's not uncommon, actually. Yeah. A lot of people who join gyms because of that book, which is which is interesting. A bit of propaganda to get you over the line, I reckon. We we can do well, that. Well, it's, it's, it's easy reading. It's just a story, but you get the culture out of it. And, and the people who like the, like the book tend to be make great franchisees and great franchisors because they it's, it's about service. That's it. Um, Stephanie Patisconi, what's your favourite Star Wars character from Brooke? Favourite Star Wars character from Brooke? It's a very good question. Favourite Star Wars character? What's your favourite Star Wars character from Brooke? Yeah, from, I mean, from Brooke. So, that, so Stephanie Patisconi, what's your favourite Star Wars character from Brooke? So it must be someone else. Oh, from Stephanie, Brooke. From Brooke's Brooke. asking. Yeah, Brooke's asking. Palpatine, of course, the Emperor. I mean, I mean, who wouldn't love somebody who, who, who comes from being some local provincial politician to becoming the Galactic Emperor? I, I think this is a great role model for our young... <laughs> <laughs> have some ambition kids come on I think he's coming back in the um, and actually in fact if you want to if you want to rule the galaxy I think a gym's franchise would be a great place to start but then you can get into business and start to build up your that's true that's true that's true you there never know go. where you might end up <laughs> when I was at school actually with my with my friend we decided we both had the same name we both intended to become world dictator really and that's what brought us together we became best friends and I was, <laughs> he was warned to stay away from me because I was a bad influence on him by the school. I was say, it's like, the, it's like the, the older version of Kim Jong-un. And who's his friend now? I can't remember. He's got one friend. Putin. Yeah. Putin and Putin and North, North Korea and Russia getting together. All right, here we go. Seth Wingard's gone. Jim's gyms. Yep, we hopefully make it happen. Eric Jim. Just, just our own gym here. It's not going to be a business. We love it. Just for my... We do have Jim's personal training. Just though. for my overly flabby staff to get some, some kilos off. Gee whiz, he's... Oh, fair, I'm not that bad. Jeez. Oh, you're a cripple. I want to play squash with you. <laughs> oh, come on. Fair dinkum, mate. I'm not too bad. I'm going all right. I'm actually riding a bike now every morning. No, you're better than most, I must say. Oh, I'm definitely better than most in the office. We have the fruit and there's... Donuts and all these other things there, no good. Yeah, yeah they do too. We're trying Some to be fresh. In there. It's pushing some of the junk food out, but they still keep on bringing the donuts in. Oh, it's quite annoying. No, right. I've got to get everybody in compulsory calisthenics at six o'clock in the morning on the oval. <laughs> like the old Mr. Burns scene, right? Yeah, and he gets right. them out there and he gets some yeah, right. some yoga. <laughs> all right. So Eric Maybe James. a personal trainer. Don't, don't, don't. Yeah, we have Jim's personal training. So we why go. not bring the thing out? Well, the we're, we're thinking about it. When we, when we get the gym going, we're going to have Jim's personal trainer come in and... and, and Help my staff to be because it's actually good, very good business. What about some yoga? Did you have you tried yoga? It's good for you. I, I know you used to do yoga. Yeah, did you, you? yoga or yoga? Yoga, both. Both. Yoga, yoga. <laughs> you can do a fair, you can do a bit of it. <laughs> All right. Um, so. I actually I used to do, I did study like do yoga for a couple of years when I was at university. Was, yeah, that's something. Learned, that's the new thing I learned tonight. I always learned something. One thing new. I didn't know you did a yoga for a couple of years in uni. Yes. So you know the benefits of it. Well. You know, what did? It didn't work as well for me as to some people, I must say. Mm. I, I I did it for a while. I was just as a way of trying to discipline my mind and so forth. But I reckon just exercise and diet is is the, is the, is the key. That's it. And God. Yeah, I'll leave that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll go there. Um, James Lyons gone. Set looks great, guys. So the boys in the background will appreciate that. Um, then Seth Wins guys gone for a few here. I'll get to it in a minute, Seth. Jared Bywater's gone. Jim's mobile stage and AV hire. So a lot of music festivals going on now. Mobile, mobile stage, roadie setting up stuff. Yeah, possibly. Difficult because it's so different from other things we do. So you'd have to look at your... It's a bit like a mobile cafe. So it, it's kind of... It, the things we do normally like mowing, cleaning, handyman... Fencing, building. Fencing, yeah. all those kind of things are very simple because they're, they're manual jobs and people call in and you just do them. Jobs that require a different kind of a marketing is a little harder for us to get the grasp of. So all of our top divisions are of the same general type. Been, it's been more difficult to get. It wouldn't be bad having Jim's Fest. You have know, music festivals names. You have festival actually. You have Jim's oh, Fest. No, I wouldn't have Jim's music festival again. It's, it's, <laughs> I was just joking. <laughs> I was a serious about that one. Glenn Sharp goes. He may join up. So Glenn, please come. All right. So we've got one here. Kerry Gibbs has gone. How do you feel about Jim's real estate? Well, it, it, it's a tough one. I, I think we should be Jim's property maintenance, actually. Property management is our, is our real thing. Well, Jim's real estate people are really good. They've got some really good experienced people in it. They do. They have a lot they of do. experts it in it. It hasn't taken off to a huge extent. And I, I still like the property management side. I think it's where we can really... Because real estate and property management go together. Sure. They sell the property and then they put the management in place. I think I think property management is our great And you area. use Jim's guys to do all the, the work. Well, what I'd like to do is to have, say, a Jim's handyman and give him a hundred houses to look after. And I say, we'll pay you a certain amount of money every month to look after all those houses, no matter what goes wrong. And that's actually, from him, it's a steady income. From the client's point of view, it means there's no surprises. They pay the same amount mm. of money regardless. Anything okay. it needs doing, we'll do for them. I think actually it's a great potential. 
So yeah. Jim's real estate, yes, but particularly is focused on the on the property management side. No, that's a great question. Uh, Matt Sheldon's got his Jim's job's going to talk to zero. Yes, absolutely. It's one of our first priorities. So yes, Matt. Zero and MYOB. Then Aaron Collinson's gone here. Is there a goal to take Jim's public? No, no. We looked at it a few years back, but it just doesn't seem worthwhile. And most public franchises tend to have a lot of issues. That's all the public yeah, ones are always... Pub companies to. tend to be very short-term focused. Um, Plus your duty changes to the shareholder, not to the franchisee. Yeah. By, by law, you have to have the duty to the shareholder. Well, actually, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, controversy about that lately. Right. There, there's, there's a sense that, that you have a duty to your, to your customers, you have a duty to your employees, as well as to your, your shareholders. And I actually firmly believe that as well. I don't think that's radical at all. Because I think actually the best businesses care about their customers and their staff quite genuinely. And they actually tend to do better than somebody just watching the bottom line. I agree. And I think that the best the best example of the goes wrong is the Domino's. You know, Domino's is a massive company or whatever. Those franchisees work for nothing. They work all those long hour weeks and yeah. and he's get a massive pay and these, packet. And these are typical companies that yeah. are bought out by retail food group and, and they just screwed them into the ground because they're looking after their short-term profit. So right. in actual fact, I think that looking after your customers and looking after your staff is actually the way long-term to look after your shareholders the best. And that's often happens. You get entrepreneurs who are driving a business, who, who build a great business. And then it goes into the hands of people who are basically uh, yeah, money counters and money grubbers, and, and, they, the next and, they, earnings and they destroy and stuff. it. Yeah, and they have good PR campaigns like that. That CEO of, of Dion Domino's is just an opinion, but I think it's a fraud, he's a fraud of the bloke, and I think he's got a good PR personal brand behind him to push him. Oh, I, I get so angry when yeah. I hear about some of the things that happen. I, I think really, it's ridiculous. I really, really, we've had franchisees approaching us for advice and stuff, and I put them onto a lawyer that I know who's understands the industry who look after them well i'll have to get the ceo of domino's doing a live stream every week and see how yeah. his franchisees go on there and, and react if, to if anybody's watching who's in an, in another business where you've been screwed by your franchisor just let me know jim at jims.net and I'll, I'll give you some advice about who to talk to i don't make anything out of it too it's, it's nothing for me i just know somebody who can help you out that's it so glenn sharp's gone here real quickly how many franchises do you have just 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 under three thousand nine hundred Yep, and 52 services now. I'll get to one more question. I'm going to do these books, all right? And the bear. Actually, who's going to win the bear? There's heaps of questions and comments. So, Seth Wingard's gone with heaps more questions here. they <laughs> gone. I don't mind this one. How do you think you can make your company and franchisees more sustainable, environmentally friendly? Or how have you already put this in place and how can it be more environmentally friendly? Well, of course, electric electric mowers and reducing travel. And Jim's Cleaning has really good environmentally friendly products as well. Also, electronic stuff too, rather than using paper. In, what about internally? We should have a no paper rule. So this should be banned. We should be using an iPad. Well, I don't use paper very much at all. In fact, in fact, well, paper on my desk is is always the blank side of things that I've been sent. Yeah. I don't use pads or anything. I just use always recycled paper. Anything that's blank that I get on site, I turn it over, and I got a, a clip, and I use it. Even little things. But like, we do have some for But we do double sided printing. Obviously, there's no color yeah. like double sided printing. We do. We save toner and stuff, all that sort of stuff. And, and I always turn lights off too. When yes, I, when you I do. go into the into the photocopy room, I always turn the light off when I leave, which people don't. And I'll turn the lights off all the time. And do yes. it at home. I mean, I think actually it's a lot of smaller things. Some people think it's all about you know vast wind plants and stuff, but in fact, a lot of the best ways is just to be conscious yourself of not wasting things. Just just at home, you know, like like we do. And I, I did a whole talk about this. I won't go into it again. But but we have very little rubbish, actually. Um, in fact, I took the rubbish out today, and it's only one bag in the bottom of the rubbish, and there's like 80% on the property. Right. So, so we actually use very little rubbish that's thrown away because most of it goes to the chooks to make into eggs or it's composted. I'm pretty bad. I throw it like 20 Uber Eats bags every week, so... They're not, yeah, they're not that good. Yeah, well, but, but <laughs> rubbish disposal is a big problem. It actually mm. really bugs me, the fact that you, you to buy certain things like berries and things, you have to buy them in these little plastic containers. That really annoys me. I'd love to go to a place where you could take your own container and just fill it up and weigh it and so forth. Mm. I mean, we you should do that. I try to do that possible. Like, if you're buying something like nuts, pistachios, then, then if, you can, if you can weigh them out in a plastic bag, at least it's only a very small amount of plastic rather than buying it prepackaged. Okay. Oh, just, just everything. Yeah. I mean, there's so many things we can do. We've really got to stop wasting so much. We've got to live more sustainably. Oh, definitely. And hopefully, um, like Jim's Cleaning has obviously their environmentally friendly products. They're actually plant-based, all plant-based. Yeah. They're environmentally friendly. And there's other divisions as well, which I'm sure do other things as well with their divisions. I'm sure heaps of divisions are going to start taking some initiatives and promote it as well.
Obviously, with pest control, for example, they do catch and release. So that's even though it's not mm. a you know what I mean, but they do catch and release with possums, and they with bees they resettle the bees. They don't just kill the bees or stuff like that. So and also Jim's energy is another one too. Yes, because Jim's energy is not just about solar panels, so that's good in itself. But they also do things like they put more efficient light bulbs, and we had them all done in their office. They're all changed to. They have energy, actually. I was which, wondering which what they were. Yeah, they're, they're actually better. They don't flicker as much, and they and they cut your power bill down like anything. And then there's things like insulation, proper insulation. Mm. And so there's, there's, there's a lot of things you can do as individuals, and we should. It's, it's all very well talking about, you know, great world projects and things, but, you know, you've got to start thinking locally too, thinking in your own backyard. How can you reduce your own, your own um, carbon footprint? That's it. So let's get onto these books now and the bear, Jim. So who do you want to give the bear to first off? Who do you want to give the bear to? <laughs> bear, bear might be the toughest one, so maybe we want to do the books first. Well, I, I know. I, I always like questions about environmental sustainability. I think that's such a that's an important moral issue today. So, that one about um, that we just had, we we find for something for a book, maybe. Oh, you know that was that was Seth Wingard, the guy who was giving us compliments. I said, ask a question. So, oh well, well done, right, Seth. I didn't even know you're the same person, honestly. <laughs> All right, I so Seth, the, so the flattery didn't work, but the question did. All right, Seth. So you tell us if it's for your mum or for your teacher, and which one you want, and um, we'll do that one. So I've got that one written down. So it's one. What about the other two? Well, you must have a favourite question. What about you? Um, well, I think for the bears, I reckon from Steph that who, was... Who gets, why do you get to give out the bear and I get to give out the book? Oh, we'll give out the bear then. Oh, you go to the bear. I'll, I'll do the, I'm going to do this one for um, for Colin, who's the rival lawn care company. All right. I want I want him to come on board, so I'm hoping this, this bribe will get Which him. Which one out. are you going to give him? I'm giving him Jim's book. Jim's book? Wow. Because yeah. that's, that's it's got the nice colour of the Division 2 on there, so hopefully subliminally it gets into him and he can come there. So... That one's available as well on the line where you can buy. So we're going to give that one to Colin, I think he's, or Glenn, sorry. So he sent us a PM. Got two more. It's obviously one more. I book. like the question about what makes you happy. I think that's really. Did we have that? What, 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 what's, what's the best thing you could say? Oh, that was fairly recent. Who said that? Oh, okay. Um, just trying to figure it out for the thing. Uh, what makes you happy? What, what do you most enjoy about your job? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was Derek. That was Derek. That was Derek. Well, Derek, you can have a beer. Which, what do you, which bear do you want? Do you want the mowing bear? All right, so Derek's going to get the bear. Um, yeah, he will have the mowing bear, I presume. Now, there's one more book, Jim. One more book. Oh, well, you picked that book. All right, so this is uh, this is a bio history one. There were so many, actually. Yeah, there's a lot. Actually, this is going to be one of the last ones we give out because I'm actually running short. We sent a whole stack off to Israel um, this morning. Oh, bio history. Yeah, I'm almost out of the, out of the printing. We're going to have to I'm going to have to rewrite it and print some more. Rewrite it, really? Yeah, it's actually amazing. I got I didn't think I'd get rid of so many, but there are demand. The demand's picking up. The interest is is quite. The I mean, it's it's funny thinking about books. Usually they sell a lot when they first go out, and then less and less and less. But yep. bio history is one of the ones that tends to keep on going out. They just the demand keeps on coming. Wow, that's good. Um, I think with Steph, because Steph had, I think I'm having young kids asking for Steph Paddock's one. So Steph, when you're in the office next week, obviously you can pick up something there. We'll try and sort it out. Um, and Jim's memeing, I'm going to give it to. Jim's memeing asks some good questions, and I and I like them. So that's that they'll really target social stuff questions, and so we'll give you that one there. Um, the questions and comments were awesome this week. There was a heap of them, and heaps of new unique ones this week. Yeah, we did. We had a lot of good questions. That was thank a lot you, of them. Thank you for those who contributed. And I'm sorry we couldn't give you all beers or books, but... <laughs> and next week is live at um, uh, training. At training. Next Wednesday. So that's a live show. And it was, and it was great last time at training because they had a really great live audience. And look, anybody who's watching, even if you're not in training, you're welcome to come along. Just just come along and be part of the live at, at 7 o'clock on the Wednesdays. Yeah, if you want to meet Jim, just come there and meet him. You, know, you don't have to go to wait yeah. till the next expo. Every Wednesday at training, we do offer that all the time. You can come along. And if you want to have a meal, you can do that sort of stuff. And Yeah, yeah, come in and, and yeah, just, just drop in and, and, and yeah. say hello. And, and we've had be someone do it before. Audience. Yeah, we've had someone before do it. So everyone's more than welcome. It's at Foothills Comment Center. So if you type in Foothills Comment Center, it's where the Jim's Group it's HQ 48 is. 48 Edinburgh Road, Moorabark. That's it. So someone like Jared. Jared should come in, actually. Jared's always online if he's, got, if he's not working. All right, so what we'll do there is we'll leave it there. Next week, 7 o'clock, Wednesday night. So that'll be Wednesday back, night. Back to Wednesday. Back to Wednesday. So this is just a once-off. But thanks, for everyone, for tuned in. It was really good and with the change of time. Bears go live on the website tomorrow. So end of tomorrow, they'll be there. Jim's Monopoly is happening as well. So I'm quite excited about that and, and organising that now. So um, we'll, we'll give away some Monopolies in the future. Probably not every week, though. because uh, It's pretty expensive, that thing. So we don't want to be doing that. No. <laughs> Probably going to sell it for about 70 bucks. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, and because you have to pay to the uh, Peter Line the, 
There's a pretty big cost involved. It's not as. It's I'm going to get a copy. I'm going to get. I'm going to get a version. My kids are not going to play any other garbage. They're going to play proper Monopoly <laughs> for now. I assume it's going to become the standard Monopoly. The standard Monopoly, but it's going to be written by. Oh, you know, when you had the World Monopoly Championship, I'm going to insist that we're the game. <laughs> but I think with you writing, it's unique as well. Okay, all those other companies and stuff have done. There would have been some writer or something, whatever. You, they will be actually by you. This thing, so I think I think it's going to be brilliant. I think it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be good. Monopoly. I I am looking forward to playing. I hate Monopoly, but I reckon playing Jim's Monopoly would be fun. That'll get you back into it. Definitely, you're going to play your own board game. You'll love it. It'd be awesome. All right. So thanks for that one, guys. We'll leave it there. We went over time so much just because of the amount of questions that were there it was heaps. We don't want to ignore anyone. If we did, we'll pick him up next week again on Wednesday night at seven o'clock. So thanks, guys. Have a good night. Really appreciate your involvement. Speed was a really yeah, good one tonight. See you later. Thank you.